I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die squid storic on a squirty road. Carried to splat halla, inky and fresh. I squid, I kid, I squid again. Oh, what a spray. Oh, what a lovely spray. Despite many press outlets getting their Metal Gear Solid 5 reviews up last week, a number of the privileged few abstained from putting out their final critiques. Most of them cited a need for more time, but only Games Radar elaborated, detailing the so-called MGS5 review boot camps in which critics were sequestered in order to play the game early. Claiming a fear of spoilers, Konami, fuck Konami, hosted reviewers at a five-day event now known quite notoriously as the Boot Camp, where they had to play the game from 9am to 5pm while under the strict supervision of Konami itself. According to Radar's Dan Dawkins, the entire event gave them a generous maximum of 40 hours of playtime, and that's only if nobody ate, drank, went for a shit, or masturbated, which, let's face it, are things all game journalists compulsively do. Now, the pressure of it all isn't something I find particularly alarming. I actually gain enjoyment from the pressure of a review, even while critiquing a game at home. It's the whole idea of a review event itself that completely turns me off, and as much as I'd like to rail exclusively on Konami for this, because Konami is Konami and Konami is the worst, the concept of the review event is a common practice that absolutely should have no place in serious games criticism. I've attended one review event in my entire career, and I can safely say it led to the shittiest review I ever wrote. The game was Mag, that PS3 exclusive online shooter that nobody remembers. For Mag, we basically had a day at a whole bunch of standing console kiosks in highly controlled local environments with PR people milling around. My review as a result was vague, ill-informed, because I was not in my natural environment when playing it. I was in this huge warehouse full of distractions, external pressures. At home, even when trying to hit an embargo, I at least feel like I can take it all in. That I'm in my natural habitat, working on my schedule. Nobody breathing down my neck, no other reviewers either side of me drawing my attention, inviting me to compare my progress to theirs. I do not regret I should say, attempting to review a game based on a PR hosted event because it gave me a valuable perspective and experience enough to know that review events are absolute bullshit that lead to wholly inferior published work. This isn't even about the length of time given at review events. I've always said I don't need to see the end credits of every single game to know whether or not certain games are good or shit, and no matter how many caterwauling video game Defense Force members claim otherwise, I stand by that. For me, the problem is a lack of quality time. Valuable time spent versus grinding hours in suboptimal environments where you can't get a proper feel for the game no matter how much you think you can. I'd trust someone's eight hours with MGS5 in their natural playing environment infinitely more than I trust someone's entire week in an orchestrated environment with Konami supervision. This is to say nothing of review events that try to sweeten the honeypot by turning a work trip into a fun and lavish experience. The most famous of these was the review event for Call of Duty Black Ops, in which the press were flown to Activision's abode via fucking helicopter and given flight helmets with their gamer tags engraved on them, which is absolutely bloody ridiculous and and yet insidiously clever on the publisher's part. When publishers host luxurious events that on the surface look like humongous wastes of fucking money, they're not just doing it for fun and generosity's sake. It's all about forming bias. Not the kind of mimetic bias that ignorant morons on game FAQs forums whine about, but a real psychological bias that aims to tie a reviewer's memories of the game to a related experience. No matter how ethical one might be, no matter how good at focusing on just the game, the aim of luxurious business and pleasure review events is to inextricably marry the pleasure and the business. It's very basic psychology, really. In this case, you've got two major problems to deal with. The distracted vagueness that invariably comes from reviewing a game outside of one's natural habitat, and the mental association that reviewer has between playing the game and having a really incredible, unforgettable time. This is not to say reviewers are being willfully dishonest, of course, just manipulated. And I'm not even suggesting that the reviews themselves will be completely dishonest or ignore glaring faults. I mean, when I played Aliens Colonial Marines, Randy Pitchford could have been under my desk giving me the best blowjob of my life. I'm talking even slide in a cheeky finger in my secret garden, and I'd still know the game was a colossal pile of fucked shit. Still, 
my review wouldn't have been half as fabulous as it was because of the distractions. And that's a good thing, because my review of Aliens Colonial Marines was bloody fabulous. The point is, when you agree to attend a review event, you are agreeing beforehand to produce an inferior product in the form of your review, in order to be the first among your peers. And I realise saying that could lead to some boiled piss from the game's media, because Lord knows some of them can get defensive about their status quo. But seriously, that's what you're fucking doing. Even worse, you're jumping through hoops and doing your job entirely on a game publisher's terms, which you just shouldn't be bloody doing. And it's not like I don't get why so many members of the press still count out to publishers. In ad-driven media especially, the pressure to try and draw eyes to your site doubtless leads to all sorts of compromise. And even if you do make a stand and say no to these events, it won't matter to publishers because there'll always be some other press outlet, some other chancer willing to take your place. And people can say it's easy for me to say this stuff now, since I'm out of that particular racket. But remember, I was in that racket, and I said no back then, and neither Destructoids nor The Escapist ever suffered for me just telling publishers no. It can be done. If you spine up and stop being afraid of missing out and losing your access, it can be done. And really, if the success of your outlet hinges on access, if your only selling point is getting a review up before a bunch of other people do, then your outlet probably deserves to tank. Because A, what value does your content have that it has no selling point other than being exclusive? And B, who are you actually working for? Your audience or some external corporation holding the Sword of Damocles above your head? Access is fine and dandy. Review copies are a crucial way of doing your job without breaking the bank. I get all that. I still work with what I've got in this business. But the games media needs to stop letting the business side of games completely call all the fucking shots. And review events to me, well, that's possibly the most bald-faced and obviously shit example of a publisher stacking all the odds in its favour. You actually can say no to this, you know. And, and if you can't, well, I'd strongly consider the foundations your business is built on. And just to bring this back round to, you know, fuck Konami, uh, I have no doubt that their version of a review event is just a little bit shittier than anybody else's version of a review event. I mean, I got an email from some member of the Australian press who said that a lot of them were shunted into an event where they had five hours with the bloody game. Now, I don't know the veracity of that, uh, because it did just come from a member of the press out there, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised, because it's Konami being Konami. Uh, but ultimately, I can't blame the publishers as much for this one, because uh, obviously they're going to do what they can to manipulate the press anyway. It's the nature of the beast, it's the scorpion on your back. Uh, my issue is with the press that agrees to it. Uh, you can have a bit more pride in yourself than that. Just say no. And I realise that I'm talking about having pride in yourself. Yeah. So may maybe I am not the best one to talk about it, but but there you go. Thanks, Squid, for me, I guess. I don't know, I kind of I kind of took the wind out of my own sails towards the end there. Oh well. an addendum, uh, some news that came up while I was producing the other video. Um, it turns out that the physical PC retail release of Metal Gear Solid 5 um, isn't a physical retail release at all. You get, you buy it and it's just a Steam installer. Konami, are you just addicted to being the worst fucking company on earth? Are you, do you get off at this point? Does it make you pre-com to think about people just being annoyed at you? It's like they can't do anything right. Only Konami, only Konami could have arguably the biggest release of the year, certainly among uh, uh, the, the hardcore crowd and manage to still make the conversation about how fucking shit they are. St the, the talk of the Hideo Kojima fallout, the fucking microtransactions, the review boot camps, and now this. What is wrong with you, you bunch of incompetent fucking boobs? That's all I had to say, it's just another excuse for me to say fuck Konami, because honestly at this point, I mean it doesn't even need to be said, but it's so much fun to say fuck Konami. Get the lever! <laughs>